Great players are willing to give up their own personal achievement for the achievement of the group. It's not whether you get knocked down, it's whether you get up. Sometimes, you have to take steps that make you uncomfortable to understand where you are and where you want to be. In order to achieve greatness, you have to be willing to sacrifice everything. Well, I want to welcome our entire Pathway family. It is so great to be with you as we conclude this series, Game Changer, where we are looking at how we can all become game changers for God's kingdom. And I believe at every location watching online, I'm looking at some game changers. And so today, this is our locker room. We're going to have a locker room conversation. How many of you have been a part of a halftime locker room conversation. How many of you maybe maybe in high school? All right, several of you. How many have had your, you know, I had my rear end chewed out a few times at those. How many of that happened? All right. Now, I, the thing I love about a locker room conversation, and so if you're a follower of Jesus here today, you are a part of Team Jesus. Can you agree with that? All right. Yes, everybody's excited about that. Yes, So we're going to have a halftime locker room conversation today, all right? Now, if you are not a follower of Jesus, you're checking faith out, I want to encourage you to kind of listen in because we're going to talk about something that is bigger than us. And I think every single person desires to be a part of something bigger than our own lives. It's what we're questing after, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, as we talk about sacrificing for the team, that's why this is a locker room talk. It's, it's going to be hard, all right? You're going to be resistant. You're going to want to be defensive. So I want to challenge you to be open. And so to help us understand what sacrificing for the team is all about, we're going to look at a couple game changers, all right? People who are game changers. And so the first one is this guy right here. I thought the Chiefs fans would cheer. What's the deal? So Patrick Mahomes, like he's a game changer. Even if you're a Broncos fan, you'd have to agree he's changed the game for you quite a bit because you have not won a game since he hit the ground, right? Like it hadn't happened for you. So Patrick Mahomes is a game changer, and he knows what it means to sacrifice for the team. How many of you remember the playoffs last year? He's like dragging his leg around, all this stuff. And you have to think he put his own body on the line, his future for the team. He sacrifices for the team. But I don't think this is the most compelling way that he has sacrificed for the team. Actually, in the offseason, I heard how he really sacrifices for the team. And so how many of you would agree with this? And if you don't, you're wrong, all right? So I'm going to start with that. He is the best quarterback in the NFL. He is. He is. Now, what I heard, I, I was watching ESPN, and they go, he is the eighth best paid quarterback in the NFL, though. In the offseason, he was. And so when asked about this, what he said was, well, that's all fine. But what I really care about is that the team wins and we win Super Bowls. That's what he cares about. He's willing to sacrifice. And here's what I want to tell you. You know his sacrifice has a number next to it. And so what we're actually going to talk about today is actually my bank account shows what I sacrifice for as well doesn't it? Did you know that? I was, I was actually going to have everybody bring their bank, banking statements to church and we could share and look at each other's, but they told me that was a bad idea. But if you were to look at mine, you could tell what I sacrifice for. 
Like there's no speak like it, money in our culture. It tells. It is the doorway into our hearts. And you can tell Patrick Mahomes cares about the team. However, I saw a report come out this week as I was preparing for this message that the Chiefs have now restructured his contract so now he is the highest paid quarterback for the next four years or something. Now, I saw a lot of shade being thrown at my boy Patrick, all right? And I want to tell you, you shouldn't throw shade at him, even if you're a Broncos fan. You would have done the same thing. You wouldn't have fought it. I'm sure it wasn't his idea. I'm sure they were like, man, you're the best. We want to pay you like the best. You know how I know you wouldn't have done it? You would have done exactly what he did, took the money? Because you're not much different than me, and that's what I would do. Because when it comes to money, I'm really not willing to sacrifice for the team. And I'm talking about the team, Jesus, kingdom of God. You know how I know I'm not willing? It's because I've seen me. I've seen me do it. For two years, my wife and I were a part of this church. Before I was a pastor, before I was on staff, I gave zero to nothing. My bank account would show you that I was a Christian in name only in some ways. I was a Christian for me and for heaven. But the truth is, I really wasn't prepared to sacrifice for the team. I told you this is going to be a locker room talk, right? Because we're going there. All right? So maybe Patrick Mahomes isn't a good example of this kind of game changer, because I don't know if any of us are. It's difficult here. We're told, like, he's just taking care of his family. And you laugh at that because he has a lot, but that's what we say too. And the reality is, is why don't we sacrifice for the team? I've heard tons of excuses. I've given all of them. You can't throw an excuse at me. It's like, well, I sacrificed my time. Just not my money, all right? That's just an excuse. I've said that one a hundred times, okay? I said that a hundred times in those two years. Well, I'm serving, so that's the way I'm doing. I've said, well, I don't really know. I don't want to pay for the lights to come on in the church. I don't want to pay. How do I know they're using the money the right way? I've said that one too. Maybe you've said that. That's why I don't sacrifice. That's why I don't give. I'm going to be real straight and honest with you, okay? Okay? The reason I didn't give was because I didn't want to. That's just true. I wanted other things. I wasn't willing to give something up. And see, sacrifice. You know, we follow a leader, Jesus, who sacrificed himself, right? And he says things in the scriptures like, Deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. Sacrifice. This is the path of life. And I looked at that and I was like, eh, I'm not going to. Because I don't want to. I like heaven. I like forgiveness of sins. But that sacrifice thing, that's for somebody else. Man, it's real quiet in here. This is going to be hard. Because this hits us right at home. I know we need a new example of a game changer. And I knew I wasn't it for this message. But the good news is, is a couple months ago I met one. And she has messed me up. And I'm going to introduce you to her. Are you ready to see her and meet her? This is her. Oh, yeah, you can clap. This is her. In the white. So this is in a village in India. A team from Pathway Church went to a village, and we went to many different churches, and this is one of them. This is actually at a leper colony. You read about lepers in the scriptures. They are in the world. It's a disease. And this is one of the India Gospel League. This is where the lepers and then their families who are affected by leprosy can live because the culture has cast them out. And we went to church with them on a Sunday. It was a three and a half hour long church service. So if you think my message is long, don't complain, okay? Don't complain. Three and a half hours. Now that woman, 
did some things that were just crazy to me. Now, I don't know if you can notice in the picture, she has no fingers on either hand, only nubs. She's lost them to leprosy. And I witnessed something that really messed me up. And we'd gone through the message and the prayer, and it was, it was kind of long. I mean, it was kind of long. I'm just going to tell you. But then they rolled this box out in the front, and it was the offering box in a leper colony. And there was a little slit cut in the top of the box, and the pastor invited people while the song was playing to come and give. And I want to tell you, out of the families that were there, one hundred percent participation they have nothing and so you're like messed up you're just like 100 percent participation i didn't think that existed right like i know it didn't exist because for a long time i never gave so they all come forward and give but most of them were sending their kids forward to put the offering in not this woman not her She clenches the money in her nubs. And as she got up, I could tell she doesn't have a foot because she's dragging and stumbling on her nub and she walks all the way forward. And I was like, when I watched her put it in the little slit in the top of the box, I was just like, can you make it a little bigger? She doesn't even have fingers. But she struggled and the whole time she just was joyful and had so much joy. And as I sat there, I realized this about myself. So if I sound passionate, it's about me. I don't know where you're at. I know where I'm at, but I'm guessing you're not too far off. Is I realized I have the most. And I sacrifice for the team the least. Now, when you think about the team, I want you to think about the Big C Church. Because I'm on the same team she's on. Team Jesus, remember? What did her gift represent? She gave all. And honestly, she gave where it cost her something. I give hoping it costs me nothing. And if it is going to cost me something, I choose to not. That's who we are. It's the American way. We need all of our stuff first. But that woman was different. And so for my benefit that I hope benefits everybody is I actually ask her a question. Why? Why? And so I want to bring up her picture again. Because it's easy to write her off. We're way more educated and smarter than she is. We have more resources in your pocket than she will have in a year. But when I stood there and I watched her, let me tell you, when it comes to following Jesus and understanding sacrifice, she's going to take us to school, and she took me to school. She understands what the kingdom of God is about at a level that I don't. And you just look at her. Man. She's a game changer. And I want to be a game changer like her. I do. And so today I hope many of you want to be a game changer like her as well. But we have to go to a really hard conversation. It's the locker room, remember? Because we have to ask this question and be willing to go there because she does. Is what must we give up for the team? It's really only truly a sacrifice. And we think it's going to hurt. We think it's going to be bad and miserable and all those things. It actually wouldn't be. But what must you give up? What must I give up in my life so that I could sacrifice for the team and look more like her, which looks more like Jesus? All right? This is, this is brutal. This is hard. It hits us at home. Because it hits us in our bank accounts. That's the thing. 
And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at actually two game changers. We're going to look at her, but we're also going to look at King David. Because you see in the scriptures, King David, what says, was a man after God's own heart. And so King David had a desire to do whatever he could do to build the temple of God. And so it really was going to be a literal temple structure. Now, in the New Testament, the temple is us, okay? It's all the believers around the world. It's the people that were in that church. It's us. God says he dwells inside of every believer. That is the new temple. And how we build the temple now is we spread the gospel so that people can come to know Jesus and the temple is built. And so as you see this story about the lengths to which the team, the nation of Israel, will go to build the temple, we should go to those lengths as well. And it requires sacrificing for the team. Now, God told David that he actually couldn't build the temple. He had too much blood on his hands. But his son Solomon was going to get to build the temple. He was going to build the temple. And so David took the fundraising project on himself. He's like, I'm going to put everything in place so Solomon can build this temple. So we're going to look at 1 Chronicles 29, starting with verse 1. You can open up in your Pathway Church app. Look in your Bible or follow along on the screen, and we're going to see what sacrificing for the team looks like, okay? So it says there, then King David said to the whole assembly, the entire team, he was having a locker room conversation that day. My son Solomon, the one whom God has chosen, is young and inexperienced. The task is great because this palatial structure is not for man, but for the Lord God. With all my resources, I have provided for the temple of my God. Gold for the gold work, silver for the silver, bronze for the bronze, iron for the iron, and wood for the wood, as well as onyx for the settings, turquoise, stones of various colors, and all kinds of fine stone and marble. All of these in large quantities. So you see, David is a king. He could have looked at all the people and just said, Hey, we're going to build the temple. You all provide everything that's needed. That's what kings do. They don't spend their own money on stuff. That's the power of being the king. But instead, David is different. He says, No, I'm going to give out of the treasury. So what we just read was the kingdom's treasury, but then David actually does something even more powerful. He sacrifices his own wealth, and he gives that as well. So David goes first, and then he looks at his leaders and some of the other people, and he says this. He says, now who is willing to consecrate themselves to the Lord today? Now, the key to this is David is not ordering them. I hope you're not feeling this is not an ordering. This is about the willing. This is about willing hearts who want to sacrifice. That's what God is looking for. So David looks at the team and he says, who is willing to give sacrificially towards the work of team God? Who's willing? And so then it says in verse 6, Then the leaders of the families, the officers of the tribes of Israel, the commanders of thousands and the commanders of hundreds, and the officials in charge of the king's work gave willingly. They weren't coerced. They weren't pressured. They sacrificially gave willingly. You're going to even see it was more than just willingly. Because in verse 9 it says, The people rejoiced at the willing response of their leaders, for they had given freely and wholeheartedly to the Lord. David the king also rejoiced greatly. And then guess what happened is every person in the nation of Israel, 100% participation of the team, just like I saw in that India church, they came forward and they gave sacrificially for the building of God's temple. 
Now, for those of us who follow Jesus, we are building God's temple with Jesus right now in this moment. Like as we share the gospel, as we serve in our communities, as we that's what we're doing is we're building the temple of God as people come to know him. That's how the temple grows and builds. And so if this project that David undertook seems serious, ours is more serious. Because heaven and hell is at stake every day in the building of God's kingdom. It is the most important work on the face of the earth. And if you're a follower of Jesus and you don't believe that, what are you putting your faith in if you don't believe that? You see, we have to be willing to sacrifice for the team because the team is the grander. The team is bigger than ourselves. The kingdom of God is bigger than what we want for our own lives. And so we need to learn from David's perspective as a game changer and from what I learned from the woman in the village that day. The first thing that we need to learn is that you've heard it said that there is no I in team, right? Have you all heard that? There's no I in team? Well, actually, there is an M-E, though. And so sacrificing for the team starts with me. Can we all say that? It starts with me. So we see that in David, don't we? David didn't look to everybody else and think like I did. When Jenny and I first started coming to church here, it's like somebody else is going to sacrifice for the team. Somebody else is going to do it. What David did is he said, if nobody else will do it, I will do it. But I have to think if I will do it, someone else will do it. And so I have to sacrifice for the team. He said this in 1 Chronicles 29 too. He said, with all my resources, I have provided for the temple of my God. Man, I wonder if I'm supposed to say the same thing. Should I say, with all my resources, everything God has given me, I am providing for the building of God's temple, the spreading of the gospel in this world. Could that be what he's talking about? Could that be what Jesus is talking about when he says to take up your cross and deny yourself and follow me? My guess is the answer is yes. And you see that woman who walked down with her nubs wanting to put it in, I had to ask her, why did you have to come forward? Why did you have to do that? Like, it was probably $5 of money. But it was a crazy amount. So we have to say the amount matters a little bit, right? What that amount represented to her was a sacrifice. It was a sacrifice. So the amount I give does show me the level of what I'm willing to give up for the kingdom of God and the sacrifice. It all starts in our hearts. But our actions speak louder than our intentions. You know that's true. I know that's true. And so I asked this woman through the interpreter, I said, why did you have to give? Why didn't you make excuses? Why did you have to bring it forward? And she said, Because the kingdom of God needs to grow. She said, because it's my gift that I get to give. Did anybody come here today? I I was like, I knew I was given the message. I had the cheat notes, right? Did you come for the time of giving today with that mindset? And the kingdom of God has to grow. So I'm going to sacrifice. I'm going to give something up in my life so the team can win. That's what she did. And then here's the crazy thing. Here's what I learned. I asked the pastor, how did she get the money? And he said, she washed clothes with her hands all week to get the money. She doesn't have fingers. Did you catch that? With her nubs. All week long, she washed people's clothes just so that she could be a part of the team and sacrifice. That was what her sacrifice meant. 
Oh, man. She's a game changer, isn't she? Man, she is. Like, I want to be like that. But I know my heart is far from that because a lot of times I just don't want to. I just don't want to. But I want to be more like her. The second thing that we can learn is sacrifice is an attitude of gratitude. And so here's something really powerful going back to David's story and the nation of Israel. See, we think what sacrifice means is we're going to give it and then we're going to hurt. And then it's going to really hurt and we're going to bleed. And it's like the sacrifice, we're going to miss out on things and all of these things. I want to see, I want you to see David's attitude. In 1 Chronicles 29, 14, he said this, but who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you, and we have given you only what comes from your hand. The attitude of gratitude. You see, it didn't hurt. Their hearts were changed, and they were like, we're going to give things up for the sake of the kingdom. So I asked the woman that same thing. As I said, you don't have a lot. You have nothing why did you give? Why didn't you keep it? I didn't tell her, but a lot of times I keep it. Like I go to Shields and buy stuff for hunting season and I keep it, right? I don't know what it is for you. Maybe it's a car payment. I bought a new car. I could have had a used car, but I had a new car. So I'm going to sacrifice so I can have that. I'm going to sacrifice for the neighborhood I live in. But she's sacrificing for the kingdom. Why? Why in the world did she do that? And what she told me was, I'm so grateful to God that he sent his son to this earth and died for my sins because I'm a sinner. And trust me, she has leprosy. Over in that culture, people have reminded her her whole life that she's a sinner. And she met a savior who saved her. And she said, heaven is now my home. She's grateful. Now, I'm not saying, I'm sure someone is going through excruciating pain here. Like, I don't want to minimize the trouble that you are having. I know for me, sometimes my troubles are pretty trivial. That's just true. But some of you are going through some really hard things. But what she shows all of us, as followers of Jesus, no matter the circumstance, can I still sacrifice with gratitude? When I look at her life, I am just like, I don't think I'd be that grateful. Because I have my life, and I'm not that grateful sometimes. I don't think we're grateful enough ever for what King Jesus has done for us. And see, that's what her sacrifice, it was an act of gratitude. That it's like, no matter what happens in my life, God has signed, sealed, and delivered me for heaven. I am saved, and she's a different person. And so when she put her money in, she smiled. She wished it could have been more, is what she said. Do you ever wish it could be more? I think I wish it could be less. And so it goes back to we need like a realignment of our souls to understand what true sacrifice, what it really means. It starts with me, and it starts with gratitude. Now, you know, as we did this, what was amazing and made it even more powerful is we were actually feeding the lepers because they don't have food. And so here's a picture of the team as we fed them. And actually my daughter, as she was putting the rice on the leaf for the lepers, this is the moment I had this conversation with the woman. And I mean, I think maybe they get it more right than we do. I mean, I hope today that you understand that 
we're on the same team they are. We have the most, and we sacrifice the least. Do you know this, that in the American church, we give 2.5% of our income, okay, to the work of God's kingdom. For the richest Christians on the face of the earth, this is a locker room talk, right? That's pathetic. It's got to mourn God's heart that we want our stuff more than we want his kingdom to come. That's just true. And you see, they have it the other way. They don't have what we have. But when she came forward, she literally gave all she had. I hope this is speaking to some of you. I know if I sound impassioned, I'm not angry. I'm not angry at you. I'm a little frustrated and angry with myself. And I hope that it's like, man, for a moment we can just pause and say, God, you need to work something out in us. And I don't care how little you think you have, because you have more than she does. And I don't care how much you have today. Because you don't have as much as King David has. That's for everybody. What are you willing to sacrifice? You know, David prayed a prayer after all the people came forward. And I hope this could be the prayer for us. It's from 1 Chronicles 29, 16. He said, Lord our God, all this abundance that we have provided for the building of your temple, for your holy name comes from your hand, and all of it belongs to you. I know, my God, that you test the heart and are pleased with integrity. All these things I have given willingly and with honest intent, and now I have seen with joy how willing your people who are here have given to you. Lord, the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, keep these desires and thoughts in the hearts of your people forever and keep their hearts loyal to you. And I hope that could be a prayer for us today. Out of all this abundance, God, it all comes from your hand. God, we're willing to give things up. You know, I don't, I don't know what that is for you. You know, and here's the power and the work of the Holy Spirit is it's something different for each and every one. And I want to tell you today, if you pray and you seek God openly and honestly, and he says, and you're like, no, I am sacrificing. Like you might be one of the few of us, I don't think it's me, that are really truly in this area sacrificing. The goal is just to go to God and just be grateful for what he's given and just say, God, I, I don't know if it's more or less, but God, you got it all. Whatever you want, you can have. But you know what I know is a lot of you are like me and we have a lot of growth that needs to happen. You know, when we think about what would we have to give up, I don't know what it looks like for you. For some of you, it probably means something drastic. Like it's like, I mentioned, it's like, would you be willing to drive an old car instead of a newer car and sacrifice for the team and give that? Ooh, that's a scary question, right? Maybe no heated steering wheel or something, you know? That's that's like, whoa, sacrificing for the team. You know, I've actually seen people in my journey actually sell the house they're living in and downsize and sacrifice and give to the team. Would you be willing? I'm not saying you should, but would you be willing? You see, that's what the woman taught me is she was willing. That's what the people of Israel is. They were willing. You see, for me, many times I'm not willing. That's the problem. That's that's the work that's got to go on the heart. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy. Being willing doesn't mean easy. Willing means God because of who you are. 
Out of the gratitude I have for you, I know it starts with me, and I am willing. You know, I don't know what it is for you. Over your life as a follower of Jesus, it's also not a one-time thing. It's going back to God. And just like that woman does every week, like she washes clothes every week so she can give. And it's just like, it's not a chore, it's not a job. It's the joy of heaven coming to earth in her life. She knows that the power of the gospel will be released through her sacrifice. And you see, here's what I know, is that in conversations I've had, even one three weeks ago, a man walked up to me and he said, you know what, I just want to tell you, because the church family of Pathway Church sacrificed and planted a campus that I got to be a part of, 10 years ago in Goddard. I truly believe, he believes this to his core, that without the presence of the gospel in that place and the leaders and the people there, that his daughter would have committed suicide. You see, we're in the heaven and hell business. You see, he would say, because people sacrificed and made that happen, his daughter's alive and she knows Jesus You see, that happens every single week. It happens in our neighborhoods. It happens in our church family. As we sacrifice, we don't sacrifice for that. We sacrifice to God. But through that sacrifice, we see God move and the kingdom of God move forward in powerful ways. You know, I had another man come up to me and he said, you know, a year and a half ago, we were, my wife had filed for divorce. And I had a friend invite us to come to church and invited us to their group. And without the presence, without the power of the building and the sacrifice of the building of the temple, we wouldn't be married today. You see, evil is prevented in this world when we sacrifice. There's hundreds and thousands of people, not just here in our community, but around the world who are being impacted because people are sacrificing. But think about what could happen if our church, our church family, and the big C church, what if we looked more like India? What if it was 100% of us sacrificing for the sake of the kingdom of God and the most important mission that has ever been on the face of the earth? And if you're writing that off right now and you're like, that's not me and you follow Jesus, you are wrong. It's all of us. It's me. And it has to start with us. And so if, I feel, if you feel like you've been through the grinder of a locker room talk, me too. And so I want you to ask this question is, what will you sacrifice for the team? What will you go? Do you have the courage to go there? What must you give up in your life and sacrifice? What must you give up? I don't know what it is. And I'll never know if you did it or But you know what? We will be able to see to the level of the sacrifice in our community will the team win. We all complain about how bad it is. Are we willing to sacrifice and do something about it? That's the question. You know, my grandpa always said, you know, there are people who complain about things and then there's people who sacrifice and do things. I think the American church is really, not just our church, we are complainers mostly. We don't want to sacrifice. And I know you've got lots of excuses. I do too. Let's just be honest, we don't want to. But it's a better life if we do. We're in a battle. What would you sacrifice for the team? And so what I want to do right now is I just want to pray and ask God. And this is heavy. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Like it's hitting us right where we live. It's right where we live. And so we need God's help and we need the Holy Spirit to lead us in what that looks like for each of us. So would you pray with me? Father, I thank you, God, for just the opportunity to come face to face for myself with a true game changer. God, I'm so grateful for her example. God, even in this moment, I'm so moved by her conviction, by you being everything to her. 
And God, I know that inside of me there is just brokenness. And when I say that I don't want to, God, that it's, I believe that the world offers something better than you and I've bought into a lie. And so, God, I know that I want to grow. God, I want to be more like her. I want to be more like King David, a man after your own heart, who was willing to go first, who was willing to sacrifice. And I can't help but think in our church family that there's people who are like, man, we're hearing you. God, it sounds like you, it sounds hard, but it sounds better than the life we've been living. And so, God, I know that there are people here. There are people at all of our locations who are willing to go there to really ask you, what will I sacrifice? What will I give up? They will ask that question. And God, when you give them the answer that they will take action and do that. And so whether it's God with just giving an offering today, God, in, a, in, in the offering envelopes that are in all the pews and seats, or whether it's going online and giving Whatever that looks like to get started, we can all give something up and sacrifice for the team. And so, God, I know it takes courage, and and God, we need you. And so right now, if you're willing to ask that question is, what do I need to give up? What should I sacrifice? If you're willing to go on that journey and ask that question, I just want you to raise your hand. Right now, no matter where you're at, at all of our locations, raise your hand. God, what what should I sacrifice? What am I willing to give up? Awesome, so many hands. We need God's help. I need God's help. Let me pray for all of us. God, I just pray that your spirit would speak to us. The God, that we would be led in a new direction. That God, our sacrifice would start with us. Our sacrifice would come from a place of gratitude for what you have done for us. God, I pray in this moment that your spirit would be speaking to us. That God, we know that we need to take action. That God, sometimes our intentions do not line up with our action. And so God, I pray for the courage to take action on the conviction that we feel. That, God, that we would be part of team Jesus, that we would sacrifice for the team so that the world, more of the world, would know you. God, we're grateful for what you've done for us. God, I also know today that there's many in this room and many watching this that they have never accepted Jesus for the very first time. And I know for you, maybe this was a different kind of message. I have described a different way to live and a different kind of life. And you know, the scriptures say that wide is the road that leads to destruction and narrow is the path that truly leads to life. So this sounds weird, but this is the path to life. It's a path to something bigger as you begin to follow Jesus that you experience what that woman did. Your sins are forgiven and you are free. And so today, if you would like to accept Jesus and pick the narrow path, a new kind of life, I want to invite you to pray this simple prayer with me in the quietness of your heart. Father, I know that I have fallen short and my sin and my shame and my guilt has separated me from you. But today, Jesus, I lay those things down and I grab hold of the grace and the forgiveness that you offer me through your perfect sacrifice on the cross so that all my sins would be forgiven and I would be free. And today, Jesus, I choose to live a new kind of life, a life that is truly life that is only found in you. Now, with everybody's head still bowed and eyes still closed, no matter where you're at, if you pray that prayer for the very first time, I just want you to declare that decision to God by simply raising your hand so that I can pray for the decision that you made. Raise your hand right now if you prayed that prayer for the very first time. Raise your hand. Awesome. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you, God, for those who have stepped into a new relationship with you today. God, I pray your spirit would guide them who now lives in them, like you live in all of us who have accepted you, to a new kind of life, a life that looks different than this world, a life where sacrifice equals joy, a life where giving equals life. 
God, I pray that in our world and our community, all of us would be a part of spreading the message of Jesus, of the work of building your temple. I pray that our giving and our hearts would be centered upon that and we would do it out of gratitude for what you've done for us. God, we pray all of this in Jesus' blessed name. Amen.